we'll go ahead and get started. Um, okay, my name's Dave Yankee. I'm the president for the Solid Waste Advisory Council. Glad everyone's here, hopefully in person and online. So I think we'll start with introductions and go around. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Scott Trebus. I work with Republic Services and I represent a solid waste management organization um, specializing with commercial operations. Good morning. I'm Jeff Mayfield with North Texas Municipal Water District and I represent a public solid waste district or authority. Good morning. Frank Pugsley with Park Hill and I represent a professional engineer in private practice with experience in municip municipal solid waste permitting and design. Good morning, Richard McHale with the City of Austin. I represent city or county solid waste agencies. And then again, I'm Dave Yankee. I'm with New Gen Strategy Solutions and represent the financial community. Good morning, I'm Chuck Mervet. I work for Waste Management. I represent a professional with experience operating a commercial landfill. Good morning, uh, Judge David Diller, Drifts in counties under 100,000. Charlie Fritz, uh, Deputy Director of the Waste Permits Division with TCEQ. Megan Henson, Section Manager, Manager for TCEQ MSW Waste Permits. Ana Iras, TCEQ Municipal, Municipal Solid Waste Permits, and I will take role for every uh, members that are online. Uh, Risa Weinberger. Good morning, I'm Risa Weinberger and I represent uh, composters and environmental educators. Okay, I think we can hear can online, hear but we can't hear it through the room. And well, you can hear online. Okay. Um, okay. Can you hear me now? I understand we can hear Risa online, so I'll count you as in. Okay, so um, people in the room Atkins. can't hear me? Okay, but just a moment. I see Rich, Mr. Uh, Bromowitz, Richard. Yes, here, and I represent the general public. OK, we're going to wait a couple of seconds while they figure out in the back. OK, so you all couldn't hear me then. We can hear you. <laughs> I'll call, I'll call. If there's any, there's any, there's any, their mics on, and there might be feedback from that. Okay. Try this one last time, uh, Mr. Richard Abramowitz. I am here. Can you hear me? Thank you. And I represent the. And who do you represent? Public, the general public. Um, Richard McHale. Okay, his mic and video is disabled, so I'll count him as here. Jennifer Lutz.
I will, I will, I will, I will. I'll introduce uh, people in the audience. Good morning, everybody. David Greer with the uh, External Relations. Jarita Sepulveda with Waste Permits Division. Larry Lane with Texas Disposal Systems. Burgess Stengel with TCQ MSW Permits. Santos Olivares with Business and Program Services uh, in Waste Permits Division. Rachel Herring with the National Waste and Recycling Association. Kimberly Dowdy with the Texas Association of Regional Councils. In the back, we have Chance Robinson on the computer. We also have Savannah Raines and Madden, Madden, Maddie Howard. And I think we had Scott Pasternak join. Yeah, good morning. Scott Pasternak with Burns and McDonnell representing the general public. Thank you. OK, um, so everybody should have a copy of the agenda. So again, welcome to the meeting. Uh, you know, the first thing we have on the agenda is the Waste Permits Division update. Uh, we're going to get an update on some of the uh, activities in the legislative set, uh, 88th le legislative session uh, and several other items. So Charlie, glad to have you here. Yes, thank you for having me. So kind of going over the legislative, I'll go both over legislative and then the sunset bill. Um, it was pretty quiet on what passed related to specifically waste permits. Um, some other bills passed that do have an impact more on the operations side, um, but specifically to waste permits, HB 3060 was the advanced recycling bill. We'll be implementing that one through rulemaking. So it's similar to the uh, pyrolysis bill from two sessions ago, where we'll just do a straight implement um, legislative implementation. So pretty much copy the statute into rules. Um, so we'll be going back. If you were familiar with that one, we changed some definition, added some definitions, um, made minimal changes throughout the rules and the MSW rules and in the industrial and hazardous waste rules. So that's what we'll be doing here for the advanced recycling. A couple of other bills um, that you'll probably be need to be aware of um, is HB 1598, which was Darby's bill about um, putting primacy of landfill permitting, MSW permitting uh, with the TCEQ. Uh, so we're still evaluating that one if rulemaking is going to be required and um, how to implement that one. That one's much less of a direct impact and more just kind of a uh, overall Arch, overarching umbrella of regulatory uh, authority in Texas for landfills. The other two, three, I guess I'll talk about that one too. So the other two, SB 1290, um, which was is a study bill. Uh, we didn't get any funding for it, so TCQ will be conducting the study and writing the report. It's about the effects of um, the operation and disposal of solar panels, wind turbines, and energy storage equipment. Uh, so we'll be re we'll be kind of conducting stakeholder meetings, gathering input. Um, not quite sure where that one's going. WPD is not leading that one. We're just kind of we're participating in it. So if you have input on it um, and want to be notified of it, let me know. Let make a no. We'll find you the contact for who's running it, and um, always welcome input on these types of study bills. A couple others, SB 471 um, is about TCEQ complaints and um, outlines when TCEQ can um, kind of stop going to nuisance complaints uh, where it's the same complaint over and over again and nothing's founded during the investigation process. Uh, so that kind of, it, that bill, I, again, more operations side, so permits didn't, permits 
analyzed it, but was not lead. That's all OCE. So I don't have a lot of information on it, but it's just about the complaint process and making some changes to help TCEQ on um, just the work, the complaint workload, which can for some facilities overwhelm the regional offices. Um, and the last one that's important to y'all other than Sunset is um, HB 3461. This was the fund consolidation bill. Um, and basically what happened last minute is that account 549, which had been um, having a declining fund balance for a while, and we've been, the agency's been talking about that balance for a long time now. Um, account 5000 and 549 were combined into account 549. So all of the fund 5000 balance um, and all the obligations were moved into 549. Statutes are still, we'll have to figure out how to probably update statutes in a couple of years, but right now all the obligations um, have been combined into 549. Um, so then our appropriations are still the same, COGS are still getting, uh, the Regional Solid Waste Grants Program is still getting the, the 5.49 appropriation per year. Um, but all the appropriations are now coming, all the revenues going into account 549, all the appropriations are coming out of account 549. For Sunset, um, I think the biggest ones um, looking at the permitting side is really the electronic posting of permit applications um, and the agency posting notices online. We've kind of been doing that, but that's this brings a lot more formal formality into it. The these two things um, will not be rolled out by uh, September 1st. So we're going, the agency for posting applications online, which MSW facilities are already doing, um, we're going to, as an agency, roll it out all together at once for all the permitting programs. So don't think we're going to, we're not going to be rolling it out next month at the end of the month. So just be on the lookout. We'll let y'all know when we get closer here through MISRAC of what the, we'll send out announcements and all that, but it's, this isn't going to be implemented by September 1. Um, the other, there's compliance history changes. Um, when, if there's a major event at a facility, the agency can take that event and reclassify compliance history. Um, so major event, major event, explosion, large fire, um, deaths at a facility, those types of major events the agency can recalculate compliance history at that point. Um, there's some other, um, there was an enforcement diversion program um, that's for small businesses and local governments that kind of, if looking at the enforcement aspect of it, deferring to this compliance assistant program on certain situations, there's a bunch of, I mean, it's regulatory, so there's a bunch of situations don't, we can get more information on it if y'all want it, but there is that sunset did have it. So just be on the lookout that we'll be implementing that as kind of a, um, a diversion program for any enforcement actions in certain situations for small businesses and local governments. Uh, that's the big ones through sunset. Um, like I said, oh, the other one was annual reporting um, for this is really it's difficult to explain. So annual reporting requirements, all basically at this point, all facilities um, with an active permit either need to be on a renewal cycle or um, report to the agency. MSW has the annual report, um, so that covers all the MSW facilities. We're looking at certain recycling facilities and scrap tire facilities because um, some of the scrap tire facilities have an annual report. Um, so that's kind of those two, the recycling facilities and the some of the scrap tires will be ones that may have to fall under this new sunset provision where there is a just an annual report saying the facility is still active. We're going to make this um, as easy as possible of, again, it, oh, the sunset required a report that says, is the facility still active? So that's what we'll be doing. That's all that report will be. Um, Again, this one will not be started on September 1st. We have a year and a half to roll this one out. And that's it for sunset, major sunset, sunset issues related to waste. What questions do you all have? So I think the 
and I'll just start off and then we can open it up to everyone. I think we'll just hold the House Bill 3060. I think there are going to be some questions on that, but you've got it on the agenda. Um, I was curious just on the, forget it right, the Senate Bill 1290 on the recycling and, you know, we've all read in the trade journals on these these issues with solar panels and the the turbines or the blades, but did I hear you right on the, the EV side? Um, specifically, what are they looking for there with the EV? It was, we weren't leading the lead on this bill, so I'm not, I don't think there was a lot of information in the bill and I wasn't part of those discussions. Um, I think it's just the, a lot of discussions on um, the environmental concerns related to these. Right. Um, so if they leak, what happens? Um, what happens with disposal? What about management? So all just kind of with an emerging issue, um, just being able to have that information. Um, and I know you all read the trade journal, so I think we are the middle ground of taking that trade journal information and condensing it to legislator, public officials and the public. So um, I think that's our role here is that there is concern of um, nuisance, sham recycling, and then with EV batteries of the, um, what if they leak, what happens when they're just sitting there, um, those types of concerns that we heard about. Now, don't you have, wasn't there a work group started? Mm -hmm. So are they gonna be involved with that? That was focused specifically on EV battery recycling. This is focusing, and th honestly, I, this is more about, um, I believe, the actual storage, like using the large-scale battery storage, um, more than focusing on the EV battery car from cars recy vehicle recycling, if that makes sense. So there, it's more focused on storage of the batteries that are still <laughs> useful and not the afterlife, is that? Yes, yeah. So an emerging market is large scale battery storage things. Um, so that's. <laughs> I was doing my best to answer all the questions and just got out there. Sorry, uh, Dave Greer, external relations division. Um, my group is the one coordinating 1290 implementation. So it is specifically focused on energy storage facilities. They're using battery. So it's battery storage for energy facilities. Okay. Not so, EVs. Okay. Gotcha. There, Which the, will become yeah. an issue, but is yeah. not in, encompassed in this bill. Right. All right. And the EV group did talk about um, what happens, can EV vehicle batteries be used secondhand um, at s these storage facilities? Um, but this 1290, uh, there's a lot more weight, there's a lot still to go on that. 1290 just focuses on, as David explained, the uh, storage, the energy storage facilities. Well, and, and so we'll move on from it just anecdotally on, on the EV you know, the afterlife piece, which will become an issue, I suspect. Um, I know, for instance, the New Mexico Recycling and the Roadrunner chapter of Tex or of SWANA, they've got a fall conference. I know one of their sessions is more on the afterlife. So just an FYI, that's in September. In, so, in New Mexico, you said? Yeah. In September? Yeah. I hear that's a great time to visit. Thank you that's for that. why I'm speaking in September. Um, anyhow, okay. Um, any other questions or things? Uh, Charlie, on the uh, noticing, and I know you still got to sort it out. Uh, do you envision, you know, currently we post permits on some website, third party, our own, whatever it is, and then we transmit to you that, and you put that on your, you picture that being the same, or are you going to take a more active role in actually scanning and posting? I, it could be either right now. Right, okay. um, we did receive two FTEs to post. Um, so how the sunset bill reads is at admin complete, the agency must um, post the admin complete version and then any subsequent revision post it online. So 
we did receive at the waste permits did receive two FTEs to complete those tasks. Um, as we're getting into the discussions, it MSW was used in it as an example throughout the whole sunset discussion of having the applicant do it and provide a link to the agency. That link goes on the notice. It works well. It that I mean, I, from our point of view, it does work well. So um, right now, I don't know which way we're going. Um, okay. Like I said, we in the discussions, we got two FTE. So I, at first I thought we were gonna say, we take it over, um, you pro we upload the application, we provide the link, we do all of that. Um, that discussion may have changed. And so it, we'll let you know, it's gonna, and it's gonna be agency-wide implementation. So um, it's not gonna be each permitting division doing its own thing. It's gonna be set at the agency level. Thanks. Anything else, Chuck? Uh, no. Thank okay. You. Any other questions, comments? Can you can you hear me? I, uh, I can. <laughs> I, oh, okay. Well, good good morning, everyone. Um, this is Steve Shannon. I represent a public recycling agency, and I was having some trouble. Uh, getting on here this morning wanted to make sure that uh, it was acknowledged that I'm in attendance as a MISRAC member. Sure. Thank you. Bills, uh, I know there are, well, bills that got a, a passed, approved, signed. I know there were a number of them looking at franchise fee issues on the collection side. Just curious if that was anything you tracked. We analyzed those bills. Um, none of them passed. Um, and yeah, we always struggle with those because as the permitting authority, we stop at the franchise. We don't go into the franchise. So we analyzed them. I actually do not have my notes on those. Um, I don't think any passed. Um, there was the one... I know that new one, we get the typical one. Well, there's that one that changes the franchise, sets the franchise fee, and then we got the new one. Um, I can't even think of the number at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't have a lot of information on that because we just, we stop at the permitting and know our scope of work. Sure. Okay. Um, and then just the last question I had, the, uh, the fund 5,000, the 549. So any history on that or the reason? So 549 is the agency's account to fund all the waste permits, uh, waste, solid waste activities in the agency. So both permitting, um, Office of Compliance and Enforcement, legal and all administrative activities, solid waste related. Um, this includes the MSW side and the industrial and hazardous waste side. So count 549 is all solid waste. That had been facing a declining fund balance. Um, we dropped the tipping fee in 2013. And at that point, we were we had a revenue matched cost. Um, but since then, the state had rolled other costs, especially retirement cost, to the agencies. And so that started to um, increase this declining fund balance that we, we hadn't accounted for that. Um, so we were really facing that declining fund balance. Um, basically, we had worked, had multiple discussions um, and threw out a variety of options of, one was combining the fund balances, um, changing the percentages between account 5,000 and 549. Um, and so we threw out a whole bunch of options and then it was that one that was picked um, to combine the two fund balances. So now uh, originally, you all know six, uh, two thirds of the tipping fee revenue goes to 549, one third goes to 5,000 did. Um, now all of that revenue goes into 549. Um, so we have the account balance um, and all that revenue stream. So we're looking at what the, we're looking at what the new uh, revenue schedule is and what our projections are and then can make um, determinations from there on um, on what fees, on how our revenue is doing and all that. So we're, we're actually in the process of that right now. Okay. Yeah, because that um, 
So the two thirds, like you said, so it won't affect the COGS, for instance, on their their program. Um, just for future uh, meetings, once you get that put together, and thank you for that clarification, I would be curious from a funding standpoint, now that they've got that other third, is that sufficient? Are they just eating into reserves? In other words, we're not covering the costs and eating into that balance. Um, yeah, that's definitely, um, like I said, we're dealing with that question right now. So um, give us, I think maybe by the next, we'll tentatively put it on the next meeting that we can give a, um, information about what the new world of 549 looks like. Um, because that is our, now that we have this large fund balance, um, we do have time again to breathe and look at all the fees, the revenues going into uh, the 549. Because again, it's more than, MSW does pay a large portion of it, but there's the IHW fees, um, voluntary cleanup program, um, some radioactive licensing fees. So there's a whole bunch, but MSW tipping fee is a, the largest portion. And then the IHW fees are a, um, those three make up the 80% of the revenue in there. So it's definitely something we're looking at because, um, and we'll, we'll have more information soon. Okay. And last question on this, I promise. Uh, one of the things there was, uh, one of the priorities for the commissioners was salary adjustments. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and I had heard some that, how did that go? So that went, yes, we didn't get the entire ask. We got a little less than half of what we asked for. So we, the, all state agencies got a 5% increase that actually happened on July 1st. And then another one that'll happen September of next year. Yeah, so 24. Um, in addition to that, the agency did get um, half, less than half of what we requested, but it was still a large amount. So we are working on um, identifying the classifications that are most um, have the most turnover. So I mean, I I know there are some classifications in waste permits um, that are on that list and that are high up on that list. So I feel confident that we will see some of that money. The other ones are OCE inspectors, um, the natural resource specialist. Um, so we did get some of that. We didn't get everything we asked. So, I mean, there'll probably be additional asks in the future, um, but we will start rolling that. And um, that was um, commissioner's concern to get that money implemented as quickly as possible. So I imagine we'll we'll be seeing those equity adjustments for staff hopefully before December. Okay, great, thank you. Do you have anything <laughs> else on? Oh yeah, I have yeah. a few other things. Um, so these will be quick. Um, wanted, last time we talked about the grants, uh, the EPA grants, um, and so the agency has applied for a couple of grants or at least submitted the notice of intent to apply. So EPA is this process of um, you submit a notice that you're going to apply and then you actually have to submit all the work plans and get approval and have that back and forth discussion with EPA. So um, the two that we've been working on is the first is that climate pollution reduction grant. Um, this one, the agency did submit a notice of intent for, so we intend to apply for it. Um, this one will be actually run by the Office of Air. Um, it's much more about um, pollution reduction, um, so not so much waste. Waste is waste can contribute, but um, most of the grants about um, pollution reduction. So Air is running that one. I can get you a contact if you all have any questions, any interest about that grant. Uh, the other one is the SWIFR grant, the Solid Waste Infrastructure Recycling Grant. This one is going to be run through Waste Permits Division. Our intent is to work with the COGS. Um, right now, we're still in the applicate the applying to EPA process. So, uh, working out, negotiating the details of um, what projects, what information, how we're going to report information back to EPA. This one is about maybe about four hundred thousand, and we plan to uh, work with the COGS to get applications and then supplement the COG grants uh, to those COGS. So that's how we'll implement that one planning to implement that one. So what's the specific purpose of that grant? That one is focusing on um, really, it's a lot of planning, 
on how to um, encourage and bolster recycling markets, uh, recycling, composting, um, waste diversion activities to uh, reduce the, uh, again, it's just waste diversion, uh, focusing on waste diversion. So re, um, getting waste streams out of the landfills. Uh, so that's, but it's a lot of, um, the one thing to note about this one is it's, we may not be able to purchase equipment on that one. It may be a lot of planning studies evaluation, education, outreach type activities. So we're, st like I said, we're still working on EPA with EPA to figure out the scope of what we can and can't grant um, projects for. Great. Thank you. Is that everything? Do yeah. Any questions? Any questions? Just a quick clarification. So both grants TCQ has received, you're just working through the details or are you waiting to hear back on the both, second one. Yeah, we're both actually waiting to hear back on both of them. We submitted notes of intent, back. yeah, okay. um, saying we will apply. Um, and then then you submit the application saying, here's our plan. Um, an application, I don't think is the right word. It's just always the word we use. So you submit the information that here's here's our work plan. Work, I think work plan. Here's our work plan. Here's our deliverables, um, all the things for a grant or a contract. Um, and then EPA has to approve it. So we're on the second one, we're working with EPA on what's allowable and permissible. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry to make you go back on the climate pollution reduction grant. That's an EPA grant also? Yes. And uh, it's through, you're managing it through Solid Waste Department. No, the pollution production, pollution reduction one is going to be through the Office of Air. Air, okay, yeah. okay. Um, I'm presuming they're going to be looking real hard on landfill emissions. That grant or landfill emissions is one of those items mentioned in the grant. Um, I just don't know where we're going to be focusing on okay. for that grant, where air is going to take it. Do you see it as a data collection effort or is it something more? Uh, that This is another one where it's a lot of um, data studies. Um, planning type activities through that grant as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, Charlie, thank you. Anytime. Um, and we have up next the MSW permits section update. Um, before we do that, can I double check, make sure I have everybody as who is here as here um, online, Tanel Atkins. Cheryl Murgo. Jennifer 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 Jennifer. Copy. Oh, it's on now. Copy Hayden. All right. Uh, Thanks for having me, Megan Henson with MSW Permits. So uh, for a few meetings in a row, I reported we had three vacancies in the section, and now we actually have six vacancies in the section. So not necessarily the direction we're hoping to move, but we are working quickly to fill those. We have uh, one posting that closed and we're starting an interview process and two others that have been, three others that have been posted. So uh, the other, two are in the queue to be posted. So uh, two of those are still geo, geo positions uh, that have been vacant for, one has been vacant for almost a year now. So tell your friends, come work at TCEQ. Uh, so that's three environmental permit specialists, two geologists and one engineering specialist. We actually reclassified one of the geo positions to an engineering specialist to hopefully get some more applicants. But with all of that, we're still getting work done with six vacancies. So for major applications, we have 23 permits currently under review and six registrations. And uh, while we talk a lot about the major applications, because it's critical to what we do, what industry does, uh, we also, I just want to touch on the reports that we work on every year. So shout out to our groundwater group who reviewed 149 reports in quarter three. 
Uh, they did an excellent job. There are only two or there are seven that were late, but they were late by 2.8 days. So pretty good. Uh, happy with those numbers. And then also our annual reports, uh, Anna and Savannah and Allison, we have a few people on those. Uh, we have almost, if not all, of the annual reports. So we're starting the data analysis part, and we plan to publish that late October, early November. Let's move in along as well. Other projects we have that are going on are the uh, we're working on improvements to the part one form, uh, mainly reorganizing, clarifying some language. It's not going to be a huge overhaul. Those who have used it, you you know, you've got that structure in place. We're keeping that structure, but it's, you know, we have some things that sound like they're optional, but really they're required to so move in those to the right section. Um, and then cleaning up some of the language, the instructions to be clear. We're working on that, but again, applications and reports are a priority, so we may uh, move that down, but hoping to have it released in a couple months. And then we're also revising public notices. Uh, this is, again, like not no major changes. Uh, it's TCEQ typically prepares the template anyway that the applicants receive and the public eventually sees. Uh, so there are going to be minor changes, again, just for readability, moving some information into areas that make a little bit more sense. Uh, so that should roll out sometime, looking at September for those. Are, are you taking any comments on those changes? On the notices? You can just say no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, always appreciate feedback, but the notice templates are, there's a lot of rules behind them. So um, always appreciate feedback, but it may have to be no. Okay. <laughs> So I did want to touch on trade fair that was in May and quite a few Miserac members attended. We appreciate y'all showing up. So just as a refresher, MSW presented on comp composting and recycling, building over closed landfill, deficiencies in applications, and then post-closure, well, closure, post-closure, and exiting post-closure care. Uh, overall, the presentations went well. They were fairly well attended. I think there was one, uh, uh, kind of competing interest presentation at the same time on, in a different track. So I don't remember which uh, presentation time dropped off, but uh, it was pretty clear there's something more interesting somewhere else. Um, so, you know, we got good feedback and, and we definitely appreciate the people who submit comments so we can take those into consideration. And I also just want to say, I know we're a year out, but we actually start planning this in December, if not sooner. So if y'all have topics, anyone, Miserac members or from the public, that would like to hear on specific topics, learn more about, let us know. Um, we're happy to, to present on things that others find interesting. And I think that's it. All right, thank you very much. Anyone have any questions? I, I just have a quick question. So for staffing, Charlie, when you mentioned two FTEs will come associated with uh, um, electronic noticing, is that in waste permits or is that, okay. And then, so that, will that be effective September 1 for your team? Yeah, so we'll have those positions, we're in the process of posting those positions um, and they're effective 9-1, so they can be filled at that date. But right. like I said, the um, the posting applications and the posting notices is not going to start on 9-1. Yeah. Okay. A any other positions you got for next FY? Or by any yeah. even? Okay. Those were the only two additional added FTEs that we got. Okay. Any other questions? I don't see any yellow hands up on the TV, so I guess we're good. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, next up, we were going to get an update on the business and program services section. Good morning. Oh, thank you. Um, we've had a pretty busy uh, quarter since last time that uh, we met, that you all met, and uh, got a few things uh, to report. Uh, I guess the most important thing is the MISRAC and nominations, and 
how all that is going. We uh, published in the Texas Register on June 16th a uh, request for nominations and uh, included all of the vacant positions, uh, six that, that uh, will expire uh, in August and then two additional that had, uh, I believe, an additional year left that have been vacant. So a total of eight. Um, and uh, we, uh, although nominations are uh, similar to the uh, uh, position open until filled, that's the approach that we're taking so that we can fill them at any time during the year, during the course of uh, of the vacancy period. Um, but as of right now, we've received 10 applications uh, for four of the available eight spots. Um, we're gonna be uh, uh, considering these 10 or any more that come in uh, by July 18th uh, and start doing, staff is gonna start doing reviews on these, uh, making sure we have uh, obtained the conflict of interest documentations and we're hoping to uh, possibly finish up our reviews and get these uh, get the new nominations potentially to the commissioners for their agenda in October. And of course, we're looking at the October meeting and uh, our, our anticipated goal is to get those approved for that meeting. Um, and then, like I said, we have uh, 10 applications for four positions. Can you tell us which of those four positions? Uh, yeah, so uh, the four positions that right now that we have applications for are an elected official from a municipality with a population of 25,000 and 100,000. And that's a, uh, that's one of the open, or, or yeah, that's one of the vacancies that was open. So that has an expiration date of 831, 2025. Um, then we also have uh, applications for a representative from a public solid waste district or authority. Um, and that one, um, the appointment expires on uh, 831, 2029. So that, that would be one of the new ones. Um, we also have applications for an official from a municipality or county solid waste agency with authority to provide solid waste management services in a defined area. That's also uh, one of ones that's expiring this year and will be good until 29. Uh, and then the last one is a representative of the general public, uh, which again expires this year and is open or, or expires in 29. So those are the four uh, that where we've gotten, where the, the ones that are open. like, yeah, we're still open on those larger yeah. cities. Yes, yeah. so the, the four that are open are, again, elected official from municipality of 100,000 or more, but less than 750,000. Elected official from a county with any population size. Elected official from a municipality with population fewer than 25,000. And elected official from a municipality with a population of 750,000 or more. So those are the four, four spots that are open. Thanks, thank you. Um, you wanna mention the proxies real quick? Yes. So one of the things that we also thank you, one of the things that we also uh, have developed and uh, th that we did include in the notice was uh, the ability to assign a proxy uh, to attend the meeting, uh, you know, during that time. And uh, we've kind of got a, a few uh, uh, requirements in there, like they they let the uh, the uh, committee know, the council know before the date those kind of things. So we did provide that option. And of course, there's always the option of a virtual. So we still didn't get any because that's where we were hoping like an environmental service director. Or right. Something like that. We, uh, we yeah, so we haven't gotten those yet. Uh, we're still hoping we got we got a week left. Uh, we reached out to as many uh, uh, stakeholders, partners that we have, uh, including uh, Tark to help us and get the word out, uh, listserv, gov delivery, uh, all those things. So uh, we're hoping that still with that, maybe we can get some momentum here in the last week. Yeah, it's a little, yeah. Anything work with, you work with T TML at all, Texas Municipal League or GFOIT, government finance officers? Um, not, yeah, just yeah. with folks that we know. Yeah. 
those no, and it's getting close to the end anyhow. Yep. So, no, that's that's great. Thank you very much. Um, so with that, uh, also we've got our uh, uh, regional plans that are coming up for adoption. Um, those 20 year plans, which will be uh, valid until 2042. So for any of us that still expect to be here in 2042, uh, these these will affect our our every day, right? Uh, but we do we are going to the agenda next Wednesday, July 19th, uh, for approval uh, of all 24 uh, regional plans, and the regional plans will be adopted into rule. So they will show up in the Texas Administrative Code, and again, they're 20 year plans, uh, 2022. Yeah, 2022 to 2042. Um, the last thing, um, the uh, 2022 um, scrap tire annual report summary was posted on our web page on June 29th. I'd like to share a couple, a few of the highlights with you. Uh, so we had approximately 54.1 million tires uh, reported as being managed throughout the state. Uh, that's an increase of 3.5 million or about 7% over 2021. And uh, I kind of take that as good news because that means that we're uh, getting uh, 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 more accurate reporting, but also uh, all of our work in uh, with the registrations, uh, with the five-year plan, with uh, going and speaking in any uh, local, uh, association, uh, those kind of things have started working and that we're getting more applications in and more registrations. Uh, so I think we're we're getting a better handle uh, certainly on on the tires that we're managing. Uh, Texas, uh, Texas, tire derived fuel, crumb rubber and la landfilling uh, from top to bottom continue to be the top three uh, tire end uses or end destinations. Um, a couple of good news, or, or one good news, a uh, piece of good news was landfilling of tires dropped by 25% uh, from 2020, yeah, from 21 to 22. Uh, in 21, there was uh, 9.1 million tires, or I'm sorry, in 2021, there was 12.5 million tires that were landfilled. Uh, we, we got 9.1 million reported for 22, so pretty good reduction there. Um, Processing and recycling, and this is for, uh, where tires are processed and they're made into things like the uh, round donut that you see uh, on the highways where uh, uh, some of those barrels uh, and construction sites are placed on. Uh, also, some of them are molded into mats, those kind of things. That, uh, that activity actually increased almost doubling, going from uh, 3.5 million tires in 21 to 7.3 in 2022. So uh, that's a big highlight for us. And uh, again, continue to work at, at, at trying to find different, uh, different solutions uh, for where those tires end up. Um, our unauthorized scrap tire piles, um, we've got about 13 million tires across 115 sites. Uh, we saw five sites being cleaned up during 2022. Uh, and that eliminated 13,000 tires, um, but we had four new tires added to the list uh, for a total of 44,000 tires. So we're hanging in there, we're staying even, uh, but then again, we're still seeing that challenge of, of addressing that. Um, so with that, y'all have any questions? Oh, thank you for that. Can we get that report distributed to all the, the MISRAC members that some yeah, we'll, of us data folks like reading it? So we'll get the link out to y'all on, on the notes. And, Perfect. Uh, and it is interesting. I know we've talked about it over the years, but it used to be that it seemed like it was one tire per person was kind of the rough estimate around 25, 26, I guess you'd be around 30 million. And no. this is like, 1.75 times that so it's gone up a lot so better reporting what have you do you think some of that's um coming in from other states especially on the tire derived fuel or do we know so right so uh 
so the reporting requires for uh, transporters and the facilities to let us know if it's if it's out if it's out of state or if they're if they're moving stuff out of state or getting stuff from in state okay. and uh, really haven't haven't seen that. Uh, I, I really do think that it's again it's it's just the reporting and us really reaching out. Um, we've had uh, in fact we've had uh, we've had seminars where we've actually ask those folks that report uh, to, to call in and we provide a training session on the reporting and, 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 and how it should be filled out. So, um, yeah, so I think it's, it's and, and, it, and again, us reaching out more and more um, that I think has, has uh, provided us with better reporting. Okay, no, that's great. And then just one question, I know on cleaning up some of the sites, there had been an issue where if you were taking tires that had been in a waste dump or illegal site and what was it trying to use it as fuel and it didn't clear with EPA or something and I know TCEQ was working on that or trying to did anything ever that ever get any legs Thank you. yeah that was uh that was resolved where now I believe it's if 10% of the metal is okay. removed, then they can, those tires can be used as tire dry fuel without any additional regulation. Okay. Yeah. And there is a memo, I think we have it on yes. the scrap tire website for the non hazardous secondary material rule. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but I guess you still have that big site out by Lubbock. Yes. Midland, yes, uh, Midland. yes, and and in the report, there's a map that shows all of the sites yeah, out the there. Big dot. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, thank you. Any questions, comments? Uh, Richard had a question. Durrett, Durrett, Durrett. Is that Riz? That Riz? That Riz? That Riz? That Riz? That Riz? Yeah, I took my hand down, but my uh, can you hear me OK? My my question was basically around why you thought the increase was so much in the amount of tires processed. And I think you answered it better reporting, better reach out. Um, and so that's but I want to confirm that, I guess. Uh, yes, that's that's what we're. Uh... That's what we're looking at is is that it it, it is better reporting uh, and and again just just reaching out um, and and so we'll continue to do that and continue to work with uh, with our stakeholders. Has the number of entities that reported changed? Thank you. So the the next item on the agenda was. Uh, the House Bill 3060, and I think some of us had questions on that, so I'm looking forward to this session. I don't know. Oh, wow. Now I'm really loud. Okay. My apologies. Let me get this sorted out. Uh, yes, um, my name is Jarita Sepulvedo, and I work in Waste Permits Division. My apologies. I, uh, Richard had a question and didn't uh, come through right before we left that section. Sorry. I'm, I'm good. Never mind. I'm good. He's good. Sorry about that. Um, I am about to begin a rule project as the rule project manager. That's the legislative implementation. And one piece of that bill legislation implementation rule is the House Bill 3060 implementation. And I just wanted to talk to you this morning a little bit about what the bill does, will do, and um, actually ask you for your help. So um, thank you for letting me have some of your time this morning. The bill was signed on May 27th and became effective immediately. The bill requires TCEQ to conduct rulemaking as soon as practicable. And um, the bill is 
uh, encouraging the conversion of plastic materials um, through uh, what they call post-use polymers and recoverable feedstocks into valuable raw materials or intermediate or final products. Um, it does that by excluding some additional recycling methods, what they call depolymerization and solvolysis from the definition of solid waste and from solid waste management requirements. Um, those methods, solvolysis and depolymerization are now added to pyrolysis and gasification under what they call advanced recycling technologies. So that's a new definition in this bill um, that they're recognizing these categories of recycling methods. Um, but in addition to those changes that they've made to several definitions in the Solid Waste Disposal Act, they've added some uh, re requirements in subchapter N, the Waste Reduction Program. And that's the piece I wanna call your attention to today. Um, Specifically, it adds uh, in Texas Health and Safety Code Section 361.4215 called Mass Balance Attribution. That section requires TCQ to adopt rules to identify third-party mass balance attribution certification systems for the purpose of implementing their, these requirements. It also amended Section uh, 361.427 specifications for recycled products. And that section now requires us to adopt rules to establish guidelines by which a product may be considered a recycled product based on the percent of recycled material or amount determined to be recycled material by a third party mass balance attribution certification system, which is contained in that product. The section requires us to specify a minimum, and I mean us, TCQ, to specify a minimum percent of the recycled material in the product that must be post-consumer waste or post-use polymers. So um, this is the portion of this bill that we will need some help from you all and from the public. And so we're requesting your feedback on specifically um, those mass balance attribution systems, the certification systems that we will be using um, for the calculation of these uh, recycled products, and also to ask for your feedback on that minimum amount that we will be uh, specifying in our rules. And I'm available to answer any questions. No, thank you for that. I'll I'll start off. Um, one thing, just curious, this. Um, and I'm not, I don't craft legislation, but this is a new book bill. There's a lot of like redacted language here. So there wasn't a prior bill, was there? This is just through the process of it being developed. Um, so Charlie actually alluded to the one from the 86th session. Um, so a lot of this language was introduced in House Bill 1953 in the 86th session. Mm -hmm. And then it's revised several of those definitions that were introduced at that time. Um, and then the mass balance stuff in subchapter N is completely new. Gotcha. Thank you. And then just one other question I had, and we'll open it up. But so this this relates a lot like to what the the project I'm assuming like in with Exxon and the city of Houston is doing. Is that accurate? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So it's a lot of um, it's it's pyrolysis. So it's people taking plastic and doing these different right. pyrolysis type applications. So I'm just curious on that. What was the so they're already doing it. So what was the need for the bill? From my understanding, this bill focused a lot on trying one expanding to the other two, the depolymerization and the other one. Um, and then trying to put a lot of more guidelines, guide guide rails on what is considered pyrolysis, the feedstocks, um, and what is not. So putting, so kind of not necessarily narrowing the scope, but make it more clear on what is and what isn't. Okay. And was was a part of it also the 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 monitoring? Because I think that's the part with the mass balance and that. That's for tracking the diversion. That's something they wanted to do as well as 
one of the goals of the bill, I guess. Yeah. So there was a lot of um, guidelines and then what, yeah, tracking and what is, um, what, how they can and start, probably start measuring it as well. And um, that that's part of the mass balance certification is how to start measuring what is and what isn't recycled. Great. Thank you. So any questions, comments from folks? Can, can you explain to me in a little simpler English what mass balance attribution is? Is it just keeping score? It, it's the wording is not by mistake and the wording is put in by the chemical council because it means something to them. And I'm just trying to understand what that means to them. Um, yes, so it's um, I've I've done a little bit of research on it through this bill and analyzing the bill and trying to develop the rule. And I understand it to be a, what they're calling an accounting system um, so that you can offset, um, you can determine that something is a recycled product uh, by saying that it has a certain percentage of recycled material in it. You know, you can say it has 15 percent of recycled material in it. But um, it's a it's a kind of an accounting system where you are using 15% recycled materials in your manufacturing products in your in manufacturing process. Um, but it's not that this particular item has exactly 15% recycled material in it. Does that help at all? <laughs> a little. Yeah. It's it's um I think it's just a way for people to uh, declare that they have recycled a certain amount of, or used a certain amount of recycled material, but not having to um, justify that every single product has only recycled, you know, that amount of recycled material. It can be a hundred percent new product, but it's um, in the manufacturing process. They they introduced fifteen percent of the, the the material to create that product. Are there any th existing third party certification firms? in Texas now? Um, I'm not certain about Texas specifically, but I do have the benefit of some other states who have also gone through this process. And um, I've I've noted several that are recognized. Um, I, I'm thinking of some of the names. Red Cert was one that just popped into my head. So there are some out there um, that I know are being uh, looked into for multiple states. Okay, but thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Uh, that this is. Let's see. So we are 10 minutes ahead of schedule. Um, so the next thing we had on the agenda was the approval of the meeting highlights. So I don't know if any if you've all read those. Um, but if so, I'll take a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second Jeff Mayfield. Great, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. OK, um, as far as action items from this meeting, the only thing I had was um, hoping to get an update potentially at the next quarter uh, quarterly meeting on the, the financial, how you, how you guys are financially with the combination of the funds, but that's it. And I know Anna will keep track because I will forget. And I have one more. Um... I will send out a copy of that tire report to everybody now, but I'll also include a link in the highlights. For the Great. Meeting. Thank you very much. OK. That's what I have. Any other questions from the advisory, the advisory council comments? OK. Any public comments? Questions. Let's start. Let's start. Let's start in the room.
Is there anybody on Teams that would like to make a comment? Should, 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 should. You have to raise your hand. I'm not sure if everybody heard. If you're on the phone on the and phone. would like to make a comment, you can press star five to raise your hand. No comments. Great. Um, so our next meeting is October 12th, and I'm going to make a motion we adjourn if i get a second all in favor all right thank you very much have a good day